Hey everybody, it's Peter from Brantford Key and welcome to Monday. This is our live video series and we're gonna have some fun today. But before we get started, there are those of you that are joining us after the live video. So let me just show you how to join us uh, live every day. And you can join in, you can ask us your questions, you can do whatever you wanna do with us. You can ask questions, you can uh, question what I said and I can show you things. So let me just show you how we do that. Let me just flip the camera there, there we go. Here's my little computer, there's our YouTube page. You're probably watching this on YouTube, although I find that some people are not watching it through YouTube. There I am, it looks like I'm singing. That's an interesting way to pause that. All right, if you go to our YouTube, or if you go to YouTube and you search for Brantford Kia, this is our page. If you refresh the page exactly at two o'clock, which is what I'm gonna do right now, you will see maybe one of two things. Either our live video will be right here, which it is not. So then you're gonna click our videos tab and da, 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 there is our live video for the day. So you click that live video and you're in. And what does that mean? That means basically, we have a little bit of an internet issue. There we go. Basically you can join us and you can chat with us. You can throw your questions up here on the screen. And the nice thing is I've got a big screen TV over there, just behind the ladder there, they're doing some work here. I can see your questions come through live. So there we go, Leroy just wrote hi. I can see that up there on the big screen and we'll answer some of your questions. So. Lots going on today. First of all, uh, we do live videos every day at two o'clock and uh, they run for about a half an hour. I tend to go off topic about that 30 minute mark. I try to stay on topic until then. So if everybody in our chat can stay on topic, that'd be great. What we do is we talk about the Kia product. Today, I've got a Tesla product in here. So this is kind of complicated. And I want you to say, I want you to uh, recognize that sometimes it's tricky for me to compare other vehicles to ours. The only thing I've, uh, Done. I don't think anyone is ever going to buy the Tesla, somebody says. Yeah. So here's the thing. The Tesla is sort of for sale, but it's also the, the car my boss is driving, which is why we have it around here regularly. When we uh, properly list it, properly put it uh, for sale, it will move. We move Teslas all the time. So here's the thing. Who am I to talk about uh, why you should buy a Kia over a Tesla? Well, first of all, we're a leader in um, EV sales in Ontario. In, uh, when the Kia Nero EV first came out, we sold more Kia Nero, we pre-sold more Kia Nero EVs than anybody else in the country combined. So we did a lot of things and um, we do a lot of things right. Now I am gonna say right off the bat, if you wanna buy a Tesla, absolutely you should buy a Tesla. I, I'm a fan of the car, a lot of us are fans of the car around here, but I get asked the question all the time, why should I buy a Kia EV instead of a Tesla? And um, people think that price is the only thing. And that's probably a fair thing to start. The vehicle over there, when it was new, was almost a quarter million dollar car. Um, that's a lot. It's uh, obviously the equivalent today would not cost near that much, but to go 150, $200,000 on a Tesla Model X uh, is not a hard thing to do. It is a very hard thing to do in the Kia land. So there is a price thing. Uh, these cars are not exactly competitors because the Model X, of course, is a larger vehicle. It is a different style vehicle. Uh, but it happens to be the Tesla that I have on the, uh, on the uh, lot today. And that's what I'll talk about. So again, a Model 3 is gonna compete more with our cars. And really that's the car that people talk about. So before we get going too far, if at any point, actually, even if you wanna start off, if the fact that I'm doing this video is something that deserves a like, do me a favor, hit the like on the video. Not a lot of Kia dealers are gonna compare their cars with cars that are outside the price range or outside a thing, or even just kind of nervous because let's face it, that is the leader in the EV segment. So if at any point something I say uh, deserves a like, do me a favor, hit the like button on that uh, video. If uh, just me doing these videos deserves a like, then do me a favor, do that. Our bosses, my bosses like to see that I'm engaging with our audience and that we like to talk about things. All right. Right, so here we go. For the next half hour or so, we're gonna talk a lot about Teslas and Kia EVs. Now I happen to have two Kia Soul EVs in here, just so we know what we're looking at. This is a Tesla Model X, I believe it's a 2017. Oh, I should have checked my notes. Tesla Model X P100D. This is the fast one. This is the top of the line, uh, or at least it was when it came out. I'm sure there are upgrades since then, but there's that P100D. Um, you're talking Ferrari levels of acceleration. You're talking comfort for seven people. Uh, it is a very cool car. It does not directly compete with either of these two cars. I happen to use two Kia Souls today. I could have used a Soul and a Nero. I just don't happen to have a Nero EV on the lot with me. So I use the long range Soul and my personal vehicle, the short range Soul. Um, there's a lot of reasons to buy a Kiwi, an EV over the Tesla. You're not gonna hear me talk about a lot of praise for the Tesla today, even though I love it. And here's the thing, if you wanna watch a video of praising a Tesla, you should just go to the Tesla dealer and see if they'll make a video for you. 
and oh wait, there's your first advantage for Kia. Here's the thing. Tesla doesn't have a dealer network. Uh, they have no plans to have a dealer network and they market the idea that a dealer is a bad thing. Nobody likes dealership experiences. Well, here's the truth. It's not that people don't like dealerships. People don't like bad dealerships. I'm gonna have to put the key in the car here because it's gonna continue to beep uh, when it's with me here. But Kia, people don't like bad dealerships, which is why this is sitting right here. This says that we are a top three percentile Kia dealer in the world. That is an award that we have won. As one of the most distinctive dealer recognition programs, Kia Platinum Prestige is awarded to the top performing three percentile among all Kia dealers around the world. Basically, we understand why you wouldn't like to go to a dealer. The same as Tesla understands why you wouldn't like to go to a dealer. The problem is we feel like if you wanna call someone up, let me just give you an example. If you buy this Tesla Model X, who are you going to text when you have a question about the car? You're not gonna text anybody from Tesla. If you buy this car, uh, as some of our EV customers will know, they will get my phone number. They're gonna text me. Last night, I had someone text me at home on a Sunday night, asking a couple, couple questions about their EV. And I texted them back. One of the biggest advantages with buying a Kia EV that people overlook is Tesla has created this campaign that dealers are bad and they are not there to help you. And the reality is a good dealer is absolutely there to help you. And I very regularly uh, have uh, conversations, FaceTime chats, or text messages back and forth with our EV customers after they've bought to help answer their questions. So that is a huge advantage to having a dealer network. And it's something that people often overlook. We'll get to the features in the cars for sure, uh, but people seem to forget that. One thing I'm gonna point out, Kevin's over there behind me. He's just uh, painting up. So uh, if those of you sometimes point out, hey, there's somebody in the background, that's fine, that's Kevin. Kevin and I hang out quite a bit. He's finishing this room and I think we're gonna paint it a lighter color of white. I think we're changing that. Um, anyways, that's what Kevin's doing in the back. Give a little like for Kevin if you uh, want. So what I've got here, again, is a couple cars. Now, the biggest thing that people talk about when they talk about an EV is range. Uh, range anxiety, range things. So previous to this level of Kia Soul, Tesla was the only car that gave us real world range. I, um, we, would, we would spend a lot of time talking with our EV customers, uh, people looking at an EV, and sometimes we had to talk them out of the EV uh, simply because it wasn't the right car for them. Tesla have, for a long time has made gas replacement cars that are full EV. We didn't do that until this generation of cars came out. This is a 2020 Kia Soul. We also have 2019 Kia Niro EV, 2020 Kia Niro EV. That's when things drastically changed for us because this car and its Niro counterpart with the same, uh, with the same uh, power plant, so same battery, same motor, regularly gets well over 400 kilometers. Uh, we have several customers that uh, regularly get over 500 kilometers of range in the summertime. So it's rated for 385. A Tesla Model 3 is rated for 402, I believe. 400 and, where are we here? Let me just double check again. 402 kilometers on a Tesla Model 3, on the base level one. So that's the one that's really in the same price class. Now we find that we can sell Kia Soul EVs and Kia, Kia Nero EVs all day and all night against that base Model 3. The reality is most people don't buy the base Model 3. So there's a lot of things going on there um, with that Model 3. It is priced accordingly. Every Kia EV will get a government discount. That's not necessarily true with every Tesla EV. Teslas are a luxury car. One thing you won't ever see us doing is you won't see us comparing the gas sold to say a Mercedes Benz. And that's why this is kind of a risky video to do. Um, there are reasons why the Tesla is a better car, but it may not be a better car for you. So the other thing that we run into with EV customers is they tend to walk in and they forget for a second how they've bought every other car that they buy. Every other car that um, you've bought before an EV, you sit there and you say, does this body style work for me? Do I want a sedan? Do I want a crossover? Do I want this? Do I want that? And people walk in and say, I want the EV. And they don't care if it's the Hyundai Kona, if it's the Nissan Leaf, it's the Kia Soul, or if it's a Tesla. And the reality is, if that's the way you're buying your EV, we have seen this in the past, people end up being very disappointed with their EV because they like the EV powertrain, but it's not the same as the car they used to have. Uh, one thing that this, one advantage this car has over a Tesla Model 3 is right here. When you pop the trunk, 
Look at the size of that opening, a huge opening right there. You're not gonna get that on a Model 3. So there's my friend, Teddy. Teddy is my, uh, he is my uh, companion. He helps me measure trunk space. The Tesla Model 3 does not have a huge trunk, but the bigger thing is, this is a vehicle where you can fold down the seats and you know what, I'll do that real quick for you. Fold down this seat. This one may not go because I have my passenger seat a little too far forward. Yep, let me just move my fastener seat. This is my personal car, so, oops. There we go. Seats are down. So again, we saw the other day, we did a video with uh, Paige helping us, and you can see that Teddy is probably five feet tall. And Teddy is up against the driver's seat. He's stretched out. He's got lots of room there. And there are, kind, there are all kinds of things. Somebody said those are clean mats. They are not clean mats in this car. But one advantage we have is if you're looking for a certain type of car, if that's the certain type of car that fits your lifestyle, it may not be the Tesla Model 3. It may be a Kia Soul. So we're going to talk features and, and everything else as we move in here. Uh, one thing I will point out, somebody pointed out my clean mats, which are actually very dirty. Let's just show them for a second. Uh, very dirty mats. If you want to see the very first set of... WeatherTechs that were ever made for a Kia Soul EV, there they are. They are dirty, but uh, I have the very first set of WeatherTechs ever made for a Soul EV. When I talk about being leaders in this space, WeatherTech came and measured our cars, and in fact, they measured this car uh, and uh, put uh, our mats in. So we really are leaders in these cars, and that's why I thought it's worthwhile pointing out the mats. All right, let's look at features for a second. Clean them, he says. Yeah, I should clean them. Hey, the, at least I got the outside clean. The outside looks nice and shiny right now. All right, go into the Tesla. We will go into the Tesla. If everybody's waiting for the Tesla, we will talk about that. One thing I wanna show you real quick, let's jump in this car. This is the long range Kia Soul. Now, some of you are saying that Teslas do not have uh, ventilated seats. They do, the one that I'm sitting across from does. Now, do you get that at the price range that you get it in a Kia Soul? Probably not. A couple things you can't get as well. Now, heads up displays are super hard to show on video. Let me see if I can zoom in for a second. I will zoom in. There we go, you have a heads up display on the Kia Soul. You do not get that on a Tesla. Um, kind of a cool feature, and that is available on the Kia Soul long range. Let me just scroll through here. Uh, never tried camping in one, someone says. Okay, we will get to your questions in a second here. I'm gonna turn the air on in here just because it is uh, very warm in here. All right, Tesla Model 3. Let's turn the fan down though. Tesla Model 3, you do get a um, 15 inch screen. And it is an excellent 15 inch screen. What you don't get is a 10 and a quarter inch screen. Now this one, again, it is smaller, but it is very functional and people expect that. Somebody's saying Elon Musk thinks uh, heads up displays are irrelevant. And that may be the case. We have customers who feel different. And that's the point. Uh, Elon Musk is not you or I. He is a billionaire who can't relate to what you and I do in real life. Sometimes what he likes uh, is very cool. And sometimes what he likes doesn't make sense. Okay, scrolling down here, this 10 and a quarter inch screen is not that much smaller than a 15 inch screen. What you also get the benefit of though, in a 10 and a quarter inch screen in a Kia, you gain the benefit of an other seven inch display screen in here. So you have as much display screen as this Tesla, but here's the thing with Tesla. You end up with a lot of features that are wow features. And we're gonna go over those in the Tesla in a little bit. Things that look cool, but they're just that, they just look cool. Doors that go up falcon wing doors, a very cool looking key. A key is a key, it works. So it's very cool, but you do end up with some features in here. Down here, a lot of people prefer on the sole, the standard style of, um, of gauges or standard style of buttons and knobs, instead of doing everything from a screen. I like doing a lot of things from a screen, but a lot of our buttons down here are duplicate buttons. One thing that this car has is Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. You can't get that in a Tesla. So if you like to have that functionality, you have to do it differently. And the Tesla sometimes has some glitches working with your iPhone, working with your Android phone. Here you're ending up with Apple CarPlay for your iPhone and you're not gonna have any glitches because it's Apple to Apple. It's your phone right through to the dash. So kind of cool situation there. Down here, wireless phone charging. Some Teslas have that, not everyone does. You've got USB ports to plug things in, of course. You have a gear shift. Now this seems kind of silly. Right here, there's a start button and the gear shift. On a Tesla, you do have a gear shift. You do not have a start button. That is very cool in a Tesla, but it can be very confusing for some people to not have that start button. 
All right, so we're going to keep rolling through here a second. Ventilated seats, you guys asked about. Of course, we have it in this car. Drive modes are here. This auto hold button. In a Tesla, you can program the car to when you release the brake to stay in place. Instead of, you have to touch the gas to move forward. That's what this button does here as well. In a Tesla, you have regenerative braking. You can do one pedal driving, they always tell it. You can do the same thing in this Kia Soul. You can set your regenerative braking, not just in the screen or the center display screen, you can set it right here with these paddle shifters. There's three levels of regenerative braking. There's actually four levels, and I'll show you what I mean. Go into drive. I'll see if I can zoom in here for you. See over there, it says auto. There we go, it says auto right there. Now, if I hit the paddle shifter, there are no levels of regenerative braking, which means this car will coast. Hit the left side paddle shifter, one, two, three additional levels, and you'll see that auto uh, light below. So the regenerative braking on this car can be set to automatically slow down extra if there's a car in front of you. Whereas a Tesla, you have a, a set limit in the big screen here, and that's all you can do. Whereas here, I can change it on the fly. I want to slow down a little extra using regenerative braking. I can just tap, tap, and use that. So kind of a cool feature. Let's talk about high beams. You're going to see right now, whoops, let's turn them to auto. If I turn my high beams on, you'll see that auto light right there. The Tesla beside me, the Tesla Model X, it also has auto high beams. You can see them right there. Now that is I'm trying to get a focus. Oh, there we go. That auto high beam, the high beams are not on right now. Why? Because it has the, um, it has, uh, the lighting in this room. So our auto high beams turn off when you see a car approaching us or when you see taillights in front of us. They also turn off when you see city lights. In a Tesla, your high beams will only turn off if they see cars in front of you. They will not turn off necessarily in the city, it means as you're driving through town, you're driving with your high beams on. So just a different way of doing things. A lot of people like Tesla for the self-driving features. We're gonna talk about that in a second. Here's the thing with the self-driving. This one has full self-driving mode. It is like a $9,000 option, I believe. It's maybe even more than that. Uh, this one has a screen in the middle. This is, again, when this was new, almost a quarter million dollar car. You get that cool screen. The self-driving feature on the Tesla has a, it is something that is very cool. A lot of people don't expect that if you bought a $25,000 Kia Forte or Kia Soul, they are also capable of steering for themselves and they're capable of braking for themselves. So if you think Tesla is the only, quote, self-driving car, you're probably correct, except that when I drive this Kia Soul, I can release my hands. It can technically go around corners on its own. Here's the thing. You're supposed to always watch the, watch the road. You're supposed to always take control of the car yourself. And on our cars, that lane keeping assist and lane following assist will keep you centered in the lane as you go down the road. Now in the Tesla, you're also supposed to keep your hands on the wheel with the self-driving. You're supposed to be in control. Uh, you, again, even, so here's the thing with the self-driving. When I drive self-driving in this car, it makes me nervous because it's kind of like driving with a teenager. It, you know it's capable of doing the things it's gonna do, but you're not sure if it's doing, the way, doing it the way you would wanna do things. The Kia Soul, that ability to steer itself, keep it centered in the lane, the ability to brake and accelerate on the cruise control works excellent. And people don't expect to have some of those features in here. And as my wife says, the car drives by itself. Now it doesn't do that, but the Kia Soul does have a lot of those features that are very similar to the way the Tesla drives. All right, we're gonna jump into your questions. We're 18 minutes in. I will show you the Tesla. We're gonna show you these cars in detail, but a lot of our customers talk about quality and other things. We'll talk about some of those things. Uh, warranty is one thing I'll talk about. Oh, let me aim that down. We will talk about the warranty on these cars as well. Kia, of course, crushes Tesla for warranty. Let me just see what the questions you guys are asking here. All right. Okay, jumping in here. Cooled seats, we will turn them on. How do you pronounce uh, Elon Musk's son's name? I have no idea. Camping in one, okay. Gradual foods. Yep, charging network. So there's, we have some people on here that have bought EVs from uh, Kia as opposed to Tesla. Does the display change colors at night? Our displays do change colors at night, yes. Uh, speed was not a factor. So that's the other thing. Tesla is a performance brand, Kia is not. Um, both of these cars are very fast. 291 foot-pounds of torque in the Kia Soul, uh, no matter which one. This is a low-range one, this is a longer-range one. They have the same amount of torque, different amounts of horsepower. Both are very quick, both accelerate very well. Um, no for the EV, says Cameron. Okay, no problem. All right. 
Let me just see if you have any questions. If, if I've missed your question, feel free to ask it in the comment right now, and I'll try to get to it as soon as I can here. Okay. So, yeah. Horsepower in the EV. 139 over here, 201 over there. A lot more in the Tesla. Again, performance car. So let's talk uh, practicality. Again, Tesla being a performance brand, these ones not being a performance brand, practicality makes a ton of sense in these cars. Uh, we're going to talk quality as well. One thing that you notice when you get inside a Tesla, there are a few parts in this car that are kind of reused from other people. This car's doors open by themselves, our car's doors do not. You still have to be a gentleman and open the doors for your date if you're watching this gentleman. All right, I want to show you some recycled parts here. Let's turn the volume down over here. Oh, here's another example of something I don't like. I need to turn the volume down. I can do it on my steering wheel right here. But what if my passenger wants to turn the volume down on this car or the fan down or something? It's all here on the screen, but let's say it's not showing or maybe I don't understand what it says right here. So we have to pull it up here and then we got to go over here and find something. Oh, it's not there. Oh, is it in the car? No, it's not. The problem with these screens and the lack of buttons. Whoops, let's just turn the fan down. Let's just bring the whole system up. Bring the fan up and we're going to turn the auto. Let's turn it all off. Whoops. There we go. Climate system off. See how hard that took me to find and even even I knew how to do that when I'm trying to do a video. That's one of the issues with this big screen where everything's there. Ergonomics is not a good thing. You have to pay attention to the car instead of the road. Coming over here, recycled buttons from other vehicles. The gear shift here is straight out of Mercedes. Nothing wrong with that, um, but it is straight out of a Mercedes. Over here, when you press these window buttons, oh, my boss is getting a call. Hello. Oh, hey Jeff, it's Peter. I'm doing a video in the car. Let me hang up on you because I got the Bluetooth in his car. Okay. Sorry, I'm going to hang up on you. Okay. All right, we're doing a live video and someone calls for the boss in his car. That's funny. All right, uh, the switch is right here. So these switches, when you press them, they sound a little clicky in here compared to um, the regular buttons that we have. They make a little bit of squeaky kind of noises there. They're not the same quality. And that's the other thing that we talk. When we shut the door on this car, you probably won't hear it in this video, but as I shut the door in the car, it sounds a little clunkier than shutting the door in this car. Real solid sound there. These car, these doors here are the Falcon wing doors. Very cool, but they are prone to squeaks and rattles. Why don't we have squeaks and rattles over here? Well, Kia owns all of the steel mine and every piece of the process for steel. So you end up with higher strength steel, stronger steel in these cars. Is the Tesla a wow factor car? A hundred percent. Can I get in any easier to this car than to this car? No, they're equally easy to get into and you're paying for that. So kind of cool features, but again, same type of function. We'll shut these ones down again here. One other thing is people get mad at me because they say um, that our vehicles should not, uh, like some of our trunks that open, they say should they should have a sensor to prevent from maybe touching someone. Very cool doors here, but if I stand here and hit this button, guess what, it just hit me in the head. Teslas do watch for other things, but they will slam their doors on your head uh, if you stand underneath them. So again, as much as it has a capability of watching for things, it's no better than taking your kids and saying, here, hop in that. In fact, we used to have a Tesla Model X, and the reason we got the Tesla Model X is because a woman who bought it was not impressed that that door came down and smacked her kid on the head. So she traded her whole car and uh, bought a different car. How's the Nero doing the snow? Uh, very well. What I always recommend is snow tires, um, winter tires in the snow, because these are eco tires, and eco tires are great for uh, efficiency, and they really are great for efficiency. There is a difference uh, in efficiency. But uh, you can get uh, uh, the eco tires here is what, what I recommend is uh, using better tires in the winter. Nothing wrong with them. The Nero comes with Michelin tires. These ones come with Nexon. Nothing wrong with either one. But those eco tires aren't the best in the winter. They're fine if you're just doing a little bit of driving. But if you're driving in lots of heavy snow, lots of other stuff, I always recommend. You want to know what that person traded for? Uh, I don't remember. Uh, we got that car from another dealer. They might have gone to a Volvo or something. But uh, point is, there you go. Okay, address and phone number, I'll give you that at the end. Uh, I've been to a Tesla dealer, they don't nag you at all. So, <laughs> so I think uh, somebody's jumping in. Again, one of the advantages I said is Tesla talks about avoiding dealers and that being a good thing. We talk about avoiding bad dealers 
And some of the, like I said, anybody who buys these cars, you end up with my contact information. Somebody reached out to me just yesterday and had some questions about their EV. I was able to help them instantly. They just sent me a text and I texted them back. So a uh, very cool um, system here where, again, being experts in these cars, we try to reach out and do everything we can for you. And that helps people out. All right, let me see your questions one more time. We're gonna to get to that 30 minute mark soon and then we'll go off topic if you want. We will take a look in the cars. Okay, reliability. Reliability is definitely in our favor when you look any test you wanna look at. Uh, Kia has more reliability. Pricing is certainly in our favor. Uh, the other thing I'm gonna talk about is before you own an EV, the only thing you're told to look for is range. And we talked about range earlier. This one's rated at 383 kilometers. We have a Nero rated at 385. Both of them regularly in this weather are around 420, 440 or higher. A lot of our, uh, yeah, actually a couple of our EV Nero buyers are regularly over 500 kilometers of range in these EVs, which again exceeds uh, what Tesla gives. And the other thing with range is that we're finding that, that the range of the Kias is true range used to be EV owner or EV manufacturers would kind of overstate the range a little bit for real, real world use. Uh, we have no problem saying 383 kilometers, you will get that. Uh, many of our people still get that much range in the winter, so that's something to keep in mind. And uh, you guys want to see the key for the Tesla, I will show you that in a second. Uh, this car, while we're talking about range, a lot of people talk about range and they think range is the be all and end all. I bought this car, has 248 kilometers of rated range. Right now I'm getting about 300 plus in the lower level range. The thing with range is every single day, if you want to, you leave your garage with full range. So I can leave every single day with 300 kilometers of range in the summer, easily 200 or more in the winter. And that's all the range I'm going to need. And I never have to go to a charge station or anything else. I just charge from home. I can quick charge places and I can do other things. But the thing I like is it's really nice to come home from 150, 200 kilometer drive, click the car in, in your own garage or own driveway and you're done. And of course, Teslas can do that as well, but you don't need to go for as much range. So some people say, I really want a Tesla, but I can't afford it. And they drive their gasoline vehicle for five or six more years as they're saving up for it when you could just get into an EV today. People love Teslas because once they get in it, they absolutely love it. Whereas what we're finding is price and range and everything else, people are jumping into our cars. It's not that people love Tesla, it's that people love electric vehicles. And we have hugely satisfied customers in our EVs as well. And a lot of that comes down to when you step into something with maybe a little bit less range than you thought you wanted, or maybe a little less cost, you get into that car today. And that's what we did. My family was going to wait to be able to afford the longer range Soul. We thought, you know what, do we really need that? We still have another gas vehicle in the uh, family so we can get, we have all the range we need for long trips. We bought this as our secondary car and it ended up being our primary car, even though it's only got 248 kilometers of range. 248 kilometers of range, rated range, again, 300 in the summer, no problem. Uh, this is our primary car for any trip under 200 kilometers for sure, many trips 250 kilometers. It only becomes our secondary vehicle if we have to travel longer than that and don't want to stop to fast charge. So what car do I have? There you go, there's my car. Uh, a lot of people want to know my car. That is, this is literally my vehicle, uh, the short range. What cars do I have? We'll talk about what cars I have later. All right, stop saying toaster on wheels is better. <laughs> okay, we'll get to some of those other questions. Okay, you guys wanna see quickly through the cars, let's just take you quickly through the Tesla. I know that's what you wanna see and uh, 28 minutes in, we'll do that. Here's the key for the Tesla. Again, very sharp looking key. You can do things like pop the hood, pop the trunk, uh, lock the doors. The buttons on there are intuitive once you know how to do things. If I wanna pop the trunk, I just hold this the trunk will pop up. Oh, sorry, that was the charge door. <laughs> See, not so intuitive. Double tap back here, I believe. There we go. Double tap, and that is the uh, trunk popping up right there. One other thing that you'll notice, all I do is walk by that door. Let's just do that again. We're gonna lock the car for a second. As we lock it, it'll shut. One cool thing about the Tesla, you walk up to it. When I do that, Normally, had I not locked it, the door would open itself. You can see that it opens itself. Put your foot on the brake right here. I'm gonna put my foot on the brake and the door shuts itself. Very cool. Nice rattle to the door when it shakes. Not what you'd expect for a high-end car. There's the dash there. There's the big 17-inch screen in this car. Again, this car cost nearly a quarter million dollars new. So um, a little bit different than Ikea, but very cool. One thing that's kind of chintzy, 
my grandmother has um, little uh, um, cabinets, and this is kind of a similar cabinet type thing. It is just a little weird knob. It looks like you could buy it at the dollar store. And that's your uh, cabinet uh, or your little container here. It just sits loose, rattles around, you know, it's just, but that's a container there. So kind of a cool thing uh, down here, but chintzy thing up there in my opinion. Glove door, uh, glove box door is right there. That's the only other button you have other than your hazard light right here. And again, very simplistic look. That's what Tesla does. One thing cool on the Tesla Model X, that whole thing is a windshield right up from there all the way to back. So your sunroof is your windshield. Uh, it's a cool car. If you want to see Kia Souls, we can show you them inside real quick too. We already showed you a little bit earlier. Uh, nice 10 and a quarter inch screens, regular dash. This one's got leather seats, perforated seats, sunroof up top. So just regular sunroof, it's closed right now. And uh, yeah, so Tesla's very cool. Don't get me wrong. If you want to buy a Tesla, I don't fault you. Teslas are very nice. But I get asked again and again and again, why buy a Kia? And uh, yeah, the Kia is uh, something that a lot of people choose not just for cost, but because they like the features. Little things like your blind spot detection as well. In my car, I have the mirrors right, let me just open the door. It's easier to show you like that. There's a blind spot detection right there in the mirrors. That is a logical spot for it. On the Tesla, you have to look in the big screen. On the Tesla Model 3, you're looking to the center of the car to see the blind spot. In my car, when I look in my mirror, if I see that orange light on, uh, you end up with uh, someone in your blind spot. Whereas the Tesla, that center screen will show me someone in my blind spot, but if I check my mirror, I won't know if there's someone in my blind spot outside of the mirror. So just something that's kind of different on the Kias. Um, got this radar plate down front here, which is used for smart cruise control. Smart cruise control can keep the distance between it and the car in front of you. It also will keep distance from it and the car in front of you using the regenerative braking, even when you're not on smart cruise control. So you let off the throttle pedal and the car can brake on its own and it will give you extra braking if the car's in front, if you want to set it up for that. So a lot of self-driving type features in the key as well. Uh, made it to the conversation. I actually have a 2019 Model 3 and Nero EV, so I have to go back to the whole show to listen. Jo John, you're uh, you're the customer that I should have been talking to. So, uh, John's actually bought a Model 3 and a, and a Kia. He didn't buy two Model 3s again. Lots of reason to buy each car. Um, one thing that's kind of cool is a lot of people know that you can control Teslas from your cell phone. You can do various things with it. Well, you can do the same thing. My uh, phone that I'm using to film this is giving me notifications all the time telling me that uh, my doors have been left unlocked. So I can lock my door from my phone. I can set the climate system for my phone. Nice thing about an EV is you can, my car can be closed in the garage. I can turn on the climate system in the winter. I can defrost it. One thing that's cool about my particular EV, I've always tried to film it. I don't know if I can do it here. Yeah, I won't be able to do it from the outside. Let's see if I can do it this way. Put my hand up against the window here. We'll see if I can get it to focus. See those little grid lines there? You can kind of see those lines. It's kind of focusing. Those little grid lines right there in, there we go. Those grid lines are almost impossible to see. Those will defrost my entire windshield on my Kia Soul EV. This is on the premium model. For whatever reason, it's not on the limited model. It's also not on the Nero, but it works like a little rear defroster, but they're very, very close together. You can't get that on a Tesla that I know of, but the entire windshield can defrost almost instantly, can defog almost instantly because of those little electric grid. We have that on a gasoline sole as well. So if my car has that for whatever reason, it's not on the higher trim level, the limited. This is the lower range one. And uh, there we go. Key app here in America is nothing compared to what we can do. Yeah, so the key app in America, that's the problem too. Um, Kia's apps in the States are different than Kia's apps in Canada. In Canada, I, we have a better app. We have a world-class app. Uh, it's a little bit slow to respond, but I can do things like set the climate for my car. I can see where it is. Uh, I can lock the car, unlock the car, all kinds of things that I can do. So it's right from the app on my phone. Can't start the car from my phone, but uh, again, not everything uh, we have is what Tesla has. All right. Is there anything I missed? Is there anything you guys want to see here? We are after the 30 minute mark. We're about 34 minutes in. If I haven't earned your like yet, feel free to give me a like on this video or subscription. My bosses just want to see that we're engaging with our audience. If I should do more EV videos, feel free to hit like. If you want me to do more EV videos with the Tesla, give me a like. Uh, whatever suits you. Uh, if I've earned your subscription, I'd love to do that. If there's a feature that you thought was pretty cool in here, one thing I want to talk about as well, the headlights in all of our EVs are LED headlights. They are the top quality headlights you can get. Uh, Tesla has LED headlights as well. Uh, really no difference between the quality of light coming off any of these cars. You get uh, absolutely the best lights I've ever had in any car in our Soul uh, EV. The Nero EV also has the LED headlights. Uh, Tesla, of course, has LED. Uh, all are good. One thing I do 
it irks me about what Tesla does. I don't know if I can show you, maybe if Kevin's around, is Kevin around? Hey Kevin, do you wanna just sit in the car and hit the brakes in the Tesla? Ke Kevin's about to star in my video. So there's the key. He's just gonna hop in the car. The door might open for you on your own. Yep, there we go, door open on his own for Kevin. <laughs> Kevin's gonna hop in the car, he's gonna hit the brakes. And when he does that, there's the brakes. So the brake lights are there. These are just the marker lights. Now, if Kevin, if you turn on the left side signal, oh, sorry, uh, left side signal. There we go. When he's on the brakes and left side signal, the left side signal goes away. It is a separate signal, but it's just that light. So you can see this light, that light there. And now if Kevin, you turn the signal off again, leave the brakes on. If he turns the signal off, leaves the brakes on, you'll see the brake light. So that is your only brake light on a very large vehicle. To me, thanks Kevin, that's all I need. Uh, to me, it makes more sense to do what Kia does. And I'll show you this over here what Kia does. I'll turn this card on for a second. Actually, I can fully start it because it's an EV. There we go. On the EVs, you have your marker lights here, your brake lights are in between there, and your signal lights are separate. So you have better lighting uh, on a Kia than you do on a Tesla. All the Teslas are very similar. Uh, these ones are better. So um, here, you wanna jump in, Kevin? There we go. Kevin will do the same thing if you want. So you can see the difference here. When Kevin jumps in, he's gonna hit the brakes and he's gonna turn on my left side signal again. Hitting the brakes, you can see the whole thing lights up, your marker lights are still on, and your signal is separate. And I think that's a huge advantage for Kia. I think it's a safety advantage because the lights on the Tesla are very small. Those are not brake lights, they're just marker lights. Whereas here, equally large marker lights, but large brake lights and separate signal lights. So there we go. That's an advantage for Kia. So that's kind of a cool thing. Give me a like on that as well. We're 36 minutes in. I think we're gonna wrap this video up very soon, unless there's something that I missed. Uh, make sure you give Kevin a like because he just worked for free for me, whether he wanted to or not. More EV, you guys like the, okay, there we go. So that's, I think, where we're gonna wrap it up. Uh, I wanna thank everyone for joining us. If uh, you wanna see more EV stuff, we have the Nero PHEV. That's a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. Pretty rare vehicle around here. Uh, we have two of them coming in stock. So if you wanna see those, uh, feel free to, uh, Tune in, and actually, if you want to subscribe, I'm not sure when they're coming in. I'm trying to get one this week. So if I can get the Nero PHEV here this week, we're going to do that. I probably want to talk about it in comparison to my car. There's a similar price range there. There's pros and cons to each. Uh, so we may do one or two videos on that car, depending on the interest on that. Of course, we're going to talk about Celtos, Forte. Anything else you guys want to talk about, let me know in the comments below. Uh, lots to talk about here. So there we go. Uh, thanks everybody for watching. Uh, if, you, if I've earned your subscription, that'd be great. If I've earned a like on the video, that's great also. Uh, hopefully I covered a little bit of ground there and uh, we'll talk to you again tomorrow.